This week we're searching Canal Side in Birmingham. Rumour has it you've got a bit of argy bargy this week. I really do like it. I hate it. I like it. <laughs> when house hunting, two heads can be better than one. <laughs> okay. Especially when you're ahead of the game. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm in clover, yes. Spring scented clover. You should try and keep your head, but you can't always come up smelling of roses. This week we're multitasking in Birmingham. Britain's second biggest city. We're house hunting, hand holding, and hard talking, hoping to buy homes in Brum. Once dubbed the workshop of the world, this former industrial city is now an international business and media hub. Home to some of the finest arts and cultural venues, more miles of canal than Venice, and the most fantastic mix of quality properties to choose from. The average price for a house in the city is £159,000, under the UK national average. But with house prices in the city increasing 4.5% in the last year, we're going to have our work cut out. I'm searching with business analyst John Owen and town planner Mo Nasser, who, along with their two cats, are currently renting in Harborne, one of Birmingham's prime locations. With its villagey feel, it's clear to see why this couple adore the area's cafe culture. But they don't have the budget to buy their first home here. And after more than 20 viewings, they've discovered they disagree on absolutely everything. There's a couple of things, I think, fundamentally that are stumbling blocks for us. How many bedrooms we need? Um, Two. So, so <laughs> I'm quite happy with it, with one bedroom. Um, I'm looking for more of a suburban feel to where we live, not in the thicker things in the city centre. Um, and I'm probably looking for completely the opposite. <laughs> oh dear. It sounds like you're going to have a tricky week, Phil. Um, ideal property for, my, for myself and the cats. Oh, and you. Um, <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> it would be a house <clears throat> on the ground floor, a little garden, it doesn't have to be massive because I'm, I'm not very good at gardening. I'm quite happy to accept that actually I need to start on the ladder and then work up. Whereas I want it all now, basically. With all these disagreements, it's no wonder their house hunt has stalled. This is going to be one tough search. In this search, neither of us are willing to compromise. I honestly don't know how Phil and Kirsty are going to help. <laughs> John's perfect pad is in the centre of town in the jewellery quarter while Mo would prefer to live a couple of miles out in Edgebaston or Moseley. Sounds like a spot of couple counselling along with the house hunting for me this week. It strikes me that the only thing you agree on is that you want to be together and you want to buy a property together. I think your expertise is, is going to be the guiding light for us. <laughs> expertise <laughs> in knocking your heads together, I think, might come into it. You've been out, you've seen a lot, so therefore you should have learnt a lot. And you haven't been able to kind of work that through amongst yourselves. Are you going to be able to do that now? It's almost a reality check for us as well, so okay. it's a crunch point for us, I think. Yeah, yeah it has to work. I'm Come on, we'll make a start. Yeah. Best foot forward. John and Mo have £120,000 to spend on their first home. Mo's dreaming of a two-bedroom house in the suburbs so he can accommodate his family from Wales. Ideally, he'd like outside space for the cats and a parking space for his car. While in stark contrast, all John wants is a one-bed flat in the city so he can enjoy an urban lifestyle. My house hunter is 29-year-old Naomi Slater, a neurosurgeon at one of the best hospitals in Britain, Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth. With daily dramas in the operating theatre, this hard-working medic has to keep a cool head. Neurosurgery is a very responsible job. You have to make um, quick snap decisions and sometimes it can be a life, life and death decision. Um, I do try and leave that responsibility very much at work. Once Naomi shut the door on her high-pressure job, her home life is a little more carefree. This high flyer is currently living in a student house share with up to 18 other people. I have to throw you a leaving party. You will. Give you a big farewell. 
but with her career on the up, Naomi has grown tired of waking to find strangers on the sofa and her food missing from the fridge. I can't keep living in a house where you've got so many people around. There's too many other distractions, especially so I've got exams coming up next few years. I actually have to buckle down and get my head down to some work. It's time to grow up and I can't live like a student forever. The one big advantage of living like a student is that Naomi has saved up a sizeable deposit. This means we can kick off her search in her favourite area of Moseley. Naomi, what would be the top things you'd want from the property itself? I'd want a kitchen that you can sit in. Could you do a bit of decoration yourself? What would you want it to look like? Yeah, I'm more than happy to do. Certainly deco I'm happy to do. Yeah. If it needs a new kind of kitchen or a new bathroom, I'm happy to do that. I definitely want the spare room because my brother lives abroad. So when he comes back, he's got a little girl. I want to uh, be able to put them up somewhere. Exactly. Right. Okie dokie. Naomi has a generous first-time buyer budget of £250,000, with a little leeway to go up to 275 for the perfect property. She's after a three-bed house with a feature kitchen and a sociable living space. Her dream home would be in or near Moseley, where we'll have the pick of beautiful Victorian character properties. Do you want to swap? <laughs> Come on. I've seen the colour of your money it's before. a bit more though. when that came from if you swap. <laughs> I, I need a relationship therapist, not a house fund. <laughs> I've got a really sweet brain surgeon. And what's the budget? Oh, it's 250,000. Oh, you say that with such glee. <laughs> I've got 120, but I don't know whether I'm looking for a one bed, a two bed, in town or out of town yet. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit. See you later, alligator. With Kirsty refusing my cash, I'd better get a move on and help my desperate duo spend theirs. For my first property, I'm taking the boys a mile north of the city centre to John's favourite part of town, the jewellery quarter. In the 18th century, it was the centre of a thriving artisan scene. And today, over one third of all the bling produced in Britain is made here. It's become a cool urban village with lots of attractions. It, it's got a good sense of community, there's lots of local amenities. It's really vibrant, it's really up and coming. It's a really easy commute into town with the trams and the train and it's walking distance as well, so it's absolutely perfect. Because the boys have such different opinions, I need to test their limits. So I'm starting with a flat that should suit John, which means a compromise for Mo on not just location, but also the second bedroom. At 691 square feet, this stylish one-bed flat is the biggest property I'll be showing the boys. It has a spacious living area, a decent-sized master bedroom, and although this flat comes with its own allocated car parking space, which should please Mo, there's no private outside space for the cats. It's on the market at 120,000 but with some good old-fashioned negotiation, I'm sure I could bring it in under budget. But will Mo be able to see any of the flat's good points? Right, we'll see what you think. First little offering I have for you. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Um, I, I really like it. Um, I like the high ceilings. It, it is a one bed, but I wondered... I know you, you want to have guests and things. Um, could there be a sofa bed? Over that. It wouldn't be too much of an issue if it was just friends coming to stay, but if my parents were coming to stay, yeah. ideally I'd want them to have a proper bed. Well, I think you'd be on the sofa bed then. Yes. <laughs> <They'd be in laughs> the Let's have a look at the bedroom. So, John's happy, but it's going to take a bit more to get Mo on board. Mo, you've got to tell me what's going through your brain. It's nice, and I'm not sure why I don't like it as much as John. Well, because you're looking for something different. Yeah. <laughs> Are you worried about the cats? It didn't even cross my mind, actually. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I'm going to tick the cats off the list. Let's <laughs> make things easy. We don't care about the cats. <laughs> Strike the cats. That's 99 things left for you to consider now. Why don't you guys go and have a look at the kitchen? It's going to be impossible, absolutely impossible. I like it. <laughs> I guess you're not quite so keen, are you? I like the space, but I'm not sure I like the flat. 
Unsurprisingly, John likes it. It's a cool flat. But Mo, he doesn't even like any of it. <laughs> Not even close. It's going to be a fun week. <laughs> Yippee doo. How'd you get on? If this had the second bedroom, I think it would feature quite highly. It, I'm not sure why, but it it just doesn't have... The second bedroom? Well, second bedroom, but it doesn't have the feeling for me. Well, I've definitely got the feeling that finding one home to please both these guys isn't going to be easy. Oh, I do love a challenge. <laughs> This week, we're scouring the streets of Birmingham. Finding first homes for a trio of young professionals. I'm with city workers John and Mo. My first property in the jewellery quarter was a hit with John, but too bijou for Mo. So I need to make sure my next house has something to get him smiling. And I'm searching with Naomi, a neurosurgeon who's grown out of her student flat share and is hankering after some headspace of her own. She'd like to live two miles south of the city centre, near her mates in the cosmopolitan suburb of Moseley. Its handsome Victorian terrace properties and great selection of bars and eateries are right up her street. My first property is a short drive to Naomi's work at the hospital and close to all her favourite haunts. What do you think? Location is perfect. Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Looks nice from the outside. Yeah? Yeah. Great. That's how it's done, Phil. Watch and learn. Hopefully, the period features inside this character property will impress. This house is a bit of a TARDIS, with two reception rooms and a separate stylish kitchen. There's two decent-sized bedrooms upstairs, and I'm confident the price will appeal. It's on £210,000, which is a whopping 40 grand under Nemi's budget. So, you've got this... Essentially, dining area, stroke, sitting mm. room. And then into this... Oh, this kitchen is lovely. I know. I like the sink. So how are you feeling now? I really like the kitchen. I like the middle wooden floor and the fact that you've got that separate room. It's on at offers in the region of 210. That's very cheap. My dog has such a healthy budget that she doesn't have to spend all of it to get what she wants. But is this house enough for her? Although upstairs isn't quite as plush as the kitchen, with plenty of cash in the pot, Naomi could easily tart it up. Do you think this is a maybe or a it's nice but no? Obviously, I did want to do a bit of work before moving in to make it kind of me. Yeah. But the basics are all there. It's definitely a maybe. Well, I'd be over the moon if I could get a definitely maybe. I thought this property was streets ahead of Naomi's student flat chair, but if it's even swankier interiors she's after, then I'd better raise my game. Two miles down the road, I'm helping John and Mo, who want completely different things for their first home together. My next house on the Edgbaston border is a Mo property. I just hope this suburban location doesn't send John running back to town. John, are you, are you having heart palpitations, I presume, being this far out of the city centre? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know where I am, actually, so it's really difficult to, to navigate. I think it's awful. Oh, you are being <laughs> negative today. <laughs> Come on, moving on. This recently refurbished house has two reception rooms and two double bedrooms, so there's a spare bed should friends and family stay over. There's a decent-sized back garden, which the cats and their owners could enjoy. Priced at £120,000, this place is bang on budget. So that's your front room, and then the second reception room here. You can see it's been spruced up. The layout works for me. I really do like it. High ceilings, some nice coving and picture rails. All this extra space in the suburbs is exactly what Mo's after. But what's John thinking? Yeah, it's, I mean, this is a, a nice room. Could you see yourself living somewhere like this, honestly? Honestly, I'd prefer not to. My preference to be living much closer. He's gonna blow. You can't both have your own way. You can't do it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's which one's gonna give way, I think. Mm. Um, let's keep going, see the rest of the house. So the location isn't doing it for John, 
but I really thought Mo would be a bit more enthusiastic. This whole process must have got quite frustrating, not agreeing with one another the whole time. Yeah, it's draining. It's no fun for either of us. We just kind of want to get it done, move on, and mm. start planning other things in our life, so... But I suspect there's something else niggling Mo. I really like the house. Mm. Pick it up and move it somewhere else. OK. It needs to be a better location. It'll be worth it in the end. Oh, it will. Yeah. Just hope it's not too far away. Yes. <laughs> Come on. So Mo thought he wanted suburbia, but now he's out here, it seems it's too quiet for his liking. I hate it. <laughs> so, it's it's, not for me either. No, it's not in the city centre. Something tells me they won't be sparking up the barbie in this garden. So I suppose I to be grateful for small mercies. At least they're now agreeing on one thing, which is they're not going to be buying this house. Back in Moseley, Naomi loved the location and the price of my first house, but I suspect it was a bit too small. Now I want to show her something with more space. King's Heath is only a 20-minute stroll from Moseley. It hasn't got the same buzz yet, which is probably why it's not Nermi's number one location. But there are signs that this area is on the up. If you're prepared to stretch your house hunt to the fringes of your favourite area, you can get a lot more property for your pound. As Phil is in the area, I've invited him along to meet my super-focused house hunter. Not to gloat, I promise. Could a house in this location work for you? Depends on the house. I wasn't hugely keen on King's Heath High Street because it's just too busy. Let's get it. It certainly looks nice on the outside. I give it that. No, I wouldn't count your chickens just yet. She's not sold on the area. But if Naomi is willing to compromise on location, I think this charming property could be just the ticket. The house has three bedrooms and reception rooms that are all in excellent nick. This kitchen backs onto a pretty garden and is a fantastic space for socialising. Priced at just under £220,000, this house is 30 grand under budget. Front room, which they use as a dining room. OK. Dining room, which they use as a sitting room. Similar to the last house, but bigger. Yeah. Uh, wooden floors, fireplace, bit of character. Yes, it's a lovely room. I really like that fireplace. So all the character features are a hit. Hopefully, her enthusiasm will continue when Naomi sees upstairs. Three bedrooms, one bathroom. Again, good proportions, lovely fireplace. Massive master bedroom. Lovely room. It's done how I would probably do something. And the windows is really sweet. Nice treatment they've put up there with the blinds and mm. everything. What's it called? A treatment? Yes, a window treatment. Okay. Learn something new every day. <laughs> this house is in mint condition. Our busy neurosurgeon wouldn't need to worry about doing any work here. She could move in and unpack immediately. That's lovely. Perfect. Wouldn't change anything. I think we've got a bit of a Goldilocks situation. First one too cold, this one too hot, next one might be perfect. That's a good size room. I could have it as a study. I think decor-wise this is exactly what she's looking for. She seemed very positive and it's a lovely house. But let's not jump to conclusions just yet. We need to see where Nermi's head is at with this location. How'd you get on in there? It's a perfect house. Perfect? I, I'm not sure I could compromise that much on location. Well, Phil, I'm going to take Goldilocks to see another house. She's been trying to tell me this is like a Goldilocks story. It's a story. Goldilocks story. Do you me? should explain why. You are? Yeah, we know. Oh, she's a brain surgeon, she already knows. She already <laughs> knows. She already knows. <laughs> the third house is always the perfect one. <laughs> See, she does know. And here's hoping it's third time lucky for my boys too. I'm midway through my search for John and Mo, and as I fail to get anywhere near a compromise, I've stolen Kirsty away from her mid-morning nap. I mean search, to help me find some middle ground. Morning, morning, morning gents. Nice to see you. Thank you. All well. Morning. Morning, morning, morning. Morning, morning. For my next property, I'm taking the lads to Mosley. Happy about being in Mosley? A lot better than yesterday, yes. <laughs> oh, did you right. get it wrong yesterday? I did something right today. <laughs> so is Mosley on both of your lists? It is, yeah. It is. Right. It is. OK. I've shown them a John flat and a Mo house, so I'm really hoping my next property has something to appeal to both. Here we've got a ground floor flat. 
but that I hope there's, there's a bit in it for you both. OK. Should we go Brilliant. in? OK, yeah, fantastic. This large one-bed flat is not as smart as the previous one, but it does have a garden and off-street parking. And it's bang on location, with a vibrant social scene and great transport links on the doorstep, which should appeal to John. Priced at just under 120 grand, it is within the boys' budget. You know, the, the great thing about this flat is it's a one bed which can very easily masquerade as a two bed. You could move the kitchen yeah. in here and then have a study in the existing kitchen, which would feel much more like a second bedroom. Can always count on you for home improvements, Kirsty. I reckon Mo has got designs on this place, but is there any hope that John's on the same page? I, I'm not sure John is on board with doing work. Just between me and you, do you think Phil's been any help? Yes, actually. Oh. I think he's made me realise that I think my expectations were quite... quite up there. So Mo is finally realising where this search is going wrong. But what about John? It was yesterday helpful? Uh, no, yesterday was helpful. Um, it was helpful because, if anything, actually it kind of reaffirmed... I, mean, I love that first flat. Um, and it reaffirmed that I, I, that's really where I want to be. Finding your first home with your partner is a massive decision, and this house hunt seems to have thrown up more questions than answers. Needs a bit of work, though. Oh, I'll cut the start of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're three houses down, and something's going to have to give. At the moment, it feels like my patience. Phil. That sounds harsh, but I think they're wasting your time. At this point, I've got the same feeling, because they're not moving things forward. So, basically, John wants to be in town, Mo wants space. They can't afford space in town. If he could afford a two-bed in town, Mo would go with that, yeah, wouldn't he? Would. he? Yeah. This isn't about different needs, it's about money. Time to sum up. I think we both like it, <clears> but I don't <throat> think either of us are excited by it. Yeah. And I, we were kind of hoping at least one of us would be to kind of push the other one. Yeah, to, yeah. Well, you're both very so. mindful of what the other one... You're both trying to satisfy yeah. the other one at the same time as satisfy yourself, and it's, it's tough. Um, but anyway. Right. Onwards. Onwards and upwards. I don't know about upwards, <laughs> but definitely onwards. I am showing the boys the best for their budget, but the sooner they realise there's no single property that'll grab both of them, the better. Because Birmingham house prices are on the up, and in a few months' time, they won't be able to afford anything we've seen. This week, we're in Birmingham and I'm hoping to find some headspace for a neurosurgeon who's still living like a student. And I'm struggling to find a property to suit my couple who, between them, have two very different sets of demands. I thought I'd found the perfect property to suit John and Mo, but in fact, they both ruled it out. So with only one property to go, the pressure's really on. So far, I've shown Naomi two properties comfortably under budget, one bang on location and another a little further out. But she's been underwhelmed by both. So we're back in Mosley and this time I'm pushing the boat out. If Nemi is prepared to blow all her budget, I think my next house could be the one. There is Mosley High Street. As you walk down here, you get to the very end when, frankly, it wouldn't surprise me if Emily Bronte popped up. <laughs> wow, it's beautiful. Location? Perfect. Very nice house. Very nice house. Every inch of space in this handsome house has been cleverly designed and offers Naomi everything she wants. Three bedrooms, stylish kitchen diner, home office, and every trainee consultant's dream, a reading room. It's on the market at £290,000, but I've heard the vendor would consider an offer of 270, which would bring it in on budget. High on Naomi's list was a feature kitchen that she can socialise in, and I'm hoping this one won't disappoint. Beautiful. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? You can really see the step up from... I love the kind of different layers. Just wait till she sees what's downstairs. It is a pricier property, but with that comes a lot more square footage. Oh, this is a fab little sitting room. 
I'd have this as a little den. <laughs> where, where, did it, where does this house go? <laughs> hello, hello. What do you think? Like a little rabbit warren. Beautiful. I've got to hand it to you, Kirsty. This house is an absolute belter. But is it all a bit too grown up for your girl? I don't think I could find a better house for this area. It's just got to think if I can stretch that extra money, then, yeah. You could buy this house and live in this house for the rest of your life. It's very rare I get to say that. It's the step up, cos obviously I was looking, like, for a starter home. Yeah. And still not... I don't need a family home. Yeah. But it's just so beautiful. But it's really beautiful. the house yesterday was lovely. 220. Yeah, it doesn't even house. compare to this one, though. Not even close. I was just playing devil's advocate. <laughs> This is one of the most charming houses I've ever seen. Yes, it is right at the top of Naomi's budget. But it's exactly what she wanted. I've shown her some really good value houses and I've shown her one that's more pricey and has a lot more to offer. And at the end of the day, she's going to be the one making the decision. And what will that decision be? So, what do you think? I think it's beautiful. And the money? If I could get it for 265, 270, I think it'd be well, well worth it. Your mind is set. There is one property I want to have a look at just before I say that it's set. Um, it's a development around the corner. So not quite the Goldilocks perfect third house ending you'd imagined after all, Kirsty. Phil, my house hunter is a grown-up. I was never expecting her to just spend £270,000 without exploring every avenue and possibility. Anyway, haven't you got quite enough on your own plate? Have I ever? John and Mo weren't tempted to take on my property number three in Moseley, so I'm taking them back into town, where John's heart lies. My final offering in the city centre is a bit of a curveball but I'm hoping it'll appeal to them both. Fingers crossed they've got the imagination to see past the scaffolding. I don't know if you've ever considered this. No, I don't think we've ever approached... I have, think... actually. Oh, you have? Yeah, I'm not told you. <laughs> you two don't communicate very much, do you? You're supposed to discuss these things. This 61-acre development in the city centre will be completed in six months' time, and I think it could be the compromise the boys desperately need. This ground-floor, one-bed flat comes with a huge outdoor terrace and an option for parking. Buying a property off-plan can give you the chance to design the interior without any headache of the work. But a new build may not be the best option if you're in a rush to move as building completion dates can run over. Not a problem for these boys, but not ideal if you're in a chain. But before we start the tour, some amateur neurosurgery Spencer style. You know what I've been dying to do with you two? <laughs> 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 OK. Right, you're with me? Come on. Currently marketed at £117,000, this flat is three grand under budget. Th that is or will be the front door of the flat. There's a loo in there, some storage, a bathroom. And then this is the kitchen and living area. And it's got a really big and generous terrace all the way around. So the terrace actually wraps around both sides. No, yeah, it's really nice. I'm, I'm impressed. Properly impressed? <laughs> Genuinely impressed, which is always good. No pressure, Mo, but what do you think? Really like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're in agreement. <laughs> this is a first. <laughs> well done, Phil. Finally, you've got a positive reaction from both of them. This is a really unexpected bonus. Yeah. This, is, this is really good. So I wanted you to see the space that you could buy to start with and, okay. and see just kind of how it could work. But there's a show home that will enable you to see the fittings and the different options and how it might look. Oh. I think this could be the answer to all their house hunting dilemmas. And hopefully the show home will help them visualise what this one-bed flat could be. No, I like it. Good. Nice square room. Yeah, easy to fit furniture in. Mm. Plenty big enough for us. Fab. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I really like it. It's really nice. I like it. No, I really like it a lot. Especially this, because it, it shows you what you can do. Sterling work, Mr Spencer. 
It seems our lads are now singing from the same song sheet. Don't want to speak too soon or jinx it or anything, but I'm sure they just agreed on something. I'm sure they just said they both liked it. Wonders never cease. Finally, they might just be finding some common ground between them. Hello. How do you get on in the show flat? Very nice. Very yeah. swish. Finished to a nice standard. Yeah. Zero work here for yeah. us. Um, which actually probably makes me feel a lot more comfortable. Finally, I'm feeling a little more comfortable too. This place does seem to be perfecto, Pip. But let's wait and see whether your cautious couple have the courage to do anything about it. Nemi fell hard for my period property number three. But before she makes any decisions, she wants me to come and see a house that's been at the back of her mind for a while. So here we are, very different from anything else we've seen. Yes. Do you like this? I like the courtyard. I like the fact that it's got parking outside, and that's a big plus in Moseley. Right, if you don't. Um, and I like the outside. This three-storey house in the heart of Moseley has three bedrooms, a decent-sized kitchen living area and its own parking space. It's priced at £250,000, which is within Nermi's budget. Front room, communal kitchen, which is something you originally said you wanted. It's very nice room. Obviously, that's it for the living space. There's three mm. bedrooms on two different floors, which is nice. The third room is a box room. So you'd have to... I think you'd probably be in the attic. Mm. What do you feel about the modern... I look? like it. You like it? I like the look. I like the space. I can imagine sitting down on the sofa here, watching TV. Nice. Do you want to have a look upstairs? Yes, please. Go and have a scoot. OK. Just when I reckoned I had it all sewn up, Naomi throws me a curveball. I thought the other three properties offered Naomi more generous living space, but perhaps she's decided that's not so important to her after all. It's a beautiful room. Lovely. This would be my den. All that student living's definitely rubbed off on Naomi. She's still fixated with creating her own little den. Naomi needs to realise that owning her own property means she can use all the space in it, not just the attic. So how do you feel about this in comparison to this morning's house? I really like the upstairs. I think the thing on this morning's house is the living space was beautiful. Yeah. But the upstairs wasn't quite the same, didn't match it. When you are living in shared accommodation, your bedroom is a, like a bed sitting room. Yeah. So you're spending much more time in your bedroom because that's your only private space. Yeah. What you have to bear in mind is that once you own the whole of something, yeah. it's your kitchen, it's your sitting room. Yeah. That is the transition, essentially, from child, student to adult. Naomi adored the charm of my period property, but now it seems she's smitten with the simplicity of this modern townhouse. This has turned into a tale of two homes, and I have no idea which one she'll go for. The boys have had a lot to think about overnight, and so they've asked to meet me in town. Yesterday, they were both completely bowled over by my new build in the city centre, but today they've asked to meet me outside property number one in the jewellery quarter, and I haven't a clue whether it's to rule it in or rule it out. Tell me about discussions last night. Um, so... Quite fraught. <laughs> fraught? Yeah. There was a lot to consider last night, so we went through an awful lot of options. We had a lot of information to digest. We've yeah. seen a lot in quite a short space of time. Yeah. Yeah, I think as we've gone through, um, probably location actually ended up being the most important thing. So it's straight back into John's favourite property in the jewellery quarter, and I've got an idea which I hope will help Mo decide if this one-bed flat could work for him. It's priced at 120000 which is at the top of their budget, but I'm confident the vendor could be persuaded to accept a lower offer. I want to show the lads how they could invest a little of the spare cash to maximise the space. Easy enough to take that wall out and open it up into the living room. It would cost you about a grand. 
If you didn't mind things being really open plan, then take this wall out as well. So you open the door and you are confronted by the most enormous space. And that would, that would give it its proper wow factor. Yeah, lots of natural light. See those big windows. Yeah. Do you think it would add value or make it more sellable? I do, actually. <laughs> because that is the weak part of the property. And who wants an internal kitchen? Bringing these walls down would make this flat feel massive. Hopefully all that extra space would be enough of an incentive for Mo to decide whether he could compromise on a second bedroom. It's certainly cheaper because a two-bedroomed pad in this patch would cost him at least another 20 grand. I'd really like it, though. Take that down, part of that down. And it'd just be all open plan. Could you live with it as it is? Oh, yeah. For now. I'd probably give it a paint for now and maybe change the worktops. Thought-provoking? Yep, lots to yep. think about, lots to take in. Definitely. Um, really glad we came to see this one. So. Yeah. Well, why don't we go and have a, have a drink and a think, decide what we want to do. Well, I don't need to be a brain surgeon to work out that John loves this flat. But living here would mean such a big compromise for Mo on location and space. This could go either way. We're in Birmingham, helping a trio of first-time buyers. It's been a tough search for the lads, and for me. They took a second look at the one-bed flat in the jewellery quarter, which is on 120 grand. John absolutely loved it. But what about Mo? I'm dying to hear how you found that viewing this morning. I think we got them pretty well. I think we started with two complete polar opposites, and we've ended up com almost entirely coming round to where I started. Because I've done so much in terms of compromise, I want to make sure that we at least get yeah, it for a good, right good, for a good price. OK, well, let's talk maths. It's on the market at 120,000, as you know. Mm -hmm. Do you have a figure in mind? I would want to get the flats as close to 100,000 as possible. Um, but I'd be interested in your views on that. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to an agreement on a location and a property is a major achievement for John and Mo. But if they're to stand a chance of getting this flat, I need them to be realistic about its price. We've got to make an offer that is serious. I I'm thinking of a figure about 113. John, what, what were you thinking? Um, I think we... This is getting tense. It's John that likes this flat the most. What will he decide? I don't know at this point. <laughs> what would be the maximum you'd pay for the flat? Or top, 110,000. OK. If you, bought, if you bought it for 110, you'd be stealing it. But that's my, my role here, is to try and buy you that flat for as cheap as possible. Now it's down to me to see if we can do a deal. With house prices in Birmingham on the rise, there's no telling how a bid of almost 10% below the asking price will be received. For their sake, I really hope I can pull this off. Stacey, hi, it's Phil Spencer here. I just wanted to come back to you after our second viewing this morning. John and Mo do very much like it. They have come up with a figure. The 110 is the figure that they would pay, and it is also the figure beyond which they would walk away. Thanks, Stacey. Cheers. Bye. Um, she's going to ring him straight away and let me know. Across town near me, the neurosurgeon, is torn between two houses, one large period property and one modern townhouse. Where is your mind at? The third property that we saw is beautiful, but it doesn't exactly suit what I need now. Mm -hmm. And I think the fourth one does fit everything that I need from a house at the moment and is the logical choice. So although Naomi thought she wanted a period property, she's discovered the low-maintenance appeal of the modern house best suits her hard-working and sociable lifestyle. The townhouse has an asking price of 250 grand, which is at the top of Naomi's budget, so it's time to play the numbers game. How do you want to proceed with house number four? I'd want to take your advice on what offer I should make. My feeling is that 
There is an asking price. It's a reasonable asking price. If I were you, I'd think, blow the saving, let's just secure yeah. it. It's not worth losing that house over that. OK. So I'd say go asking price. I'm glad she's taken my advice, but it's not always easy to pay what's being asked. Ashley, as you know, uh, my client saw the house uh, this morning, well, this afternoon. Uh, what has been the level of interest since it came on the market? Right, so you've got two interested parties, both of whom have properties to sell. Right. This is clearly a popular house, but Naomi is in a good position with a healthy deposit. She should have the winning ticket. Would 245 shut everyone else out, out and sort it out? OK, OK. Thanks, Ashley. Sorry about that. It was just that I saw a window. There's no point in paying 250 no. if you don't have to pay 250. No, of course. He just talked a bit, you know, and I just thought, you know what, I think we can save a couple of grand here. Nice work, Kirsty. Hold on, it's not a done deal yet. Back in town, the boys are on tenterhooks as we wait to hear if their offer of 110 has been accepted. Hi there. What, what turned out at your end? OK. I appreciate you being straight with me. Thank you. And um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. But it isn't good news. He had been wanting 150. She said she thought he would go with 112. What do you think? <laughs> I think we should stick to our original thought and stick with the offer. This is tough. I know John loves the flat, but Mo is less enamoured. Kirsty was right. When the chips are down, it's all about the money. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think we settled on a figure of of 110, that's what we were comfortable with. Um, fine, so. Don't worry about it. But it's Phil again. Hello, hi. Um, I'm afraid it was a rather brief conversation at this end. I'm sorry about that. Um, but they're absolutely happy to, to, to stick at 110. Um, that, that is what they'll pay. OK, I will wait here. Thanks a lot. Bye. Never know your luck with these things. We've said 110, we said we weren't mucking about. 110 is where it's at. Hi there. Hi, yeah, all well. How did you get on? Can't do it. OK, um, that's a great shame. Not any good, I'm afraid, not at 110. Give it some thought, but he's the office on the table and see if he comes back to us. And uh, that's a good offer, and I think we're in a good spot for now. We'll leave it. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> well, I'm gutted about this. The one good thing to come out of it is that they're starting to understand one another's needs and I hope it won't be long before they find their perfect home. Meanwhile, over in Moseley, we're waiting to hear back from the agent. Ashley? Yes. We've made an offer. He's accepted it at 245. That's great. We're going we're gonna, to, we're gonna, you know, celebrate that fact. In the end, we saved five grand. Deal done at 2.45. OK, bye. Your offer's been accepted. Yay! Which is fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. That was, that was what we needed. Naomi, how do you feel? Fabulous. Good. Yes. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> so it's goodbye student flat oh. share and hello smart new home. I do love a fairy tale with a happy ending. And eight weeks later, after 11 years of living in house shares, neurosurgeon Nem has finally swapped her days of living like a student for a grown-up place of her own. It was a pretty amazing feeling to come into your own house and 
put my goodies out that I've collected over the years. But going from renting just one room to owning a three-bed house means there's a lot of space to fill. I've got to furnish a whole house now, so I'm going to be a good friend of the furniture shops. <laughs> my uh, plans over the next few days is to try and at least get some type of living arrangement sorted. Leaving behind up to 18 housemates will give Naomi the peace and quiet to concentrate on her studies. I'm hoping life is going to be a lot easier now. Over the next few years, I'm going to have exams coming up and having my own space without being disturbed all the time is going to be absolutely fantastic. It's a really good feeling. It's very exciting. I'm very happy. <laughs>